Slab business. Rump Where are we at? Here at Gillette Stadium, right outside of Rhode Island. We'll call it that. It's actually closer to the province than Boston, but this is the Union Patriots place. Gillette Stadium right there. We're going to check out Card Vault, go see Costa, go see Timmy Tens. Cold out here, but we're going to have some fun, rip some packs, hopefully, throw some slabs. Slab business. All right, guys, here we are. Card Vault. Super, super dope. Let's just start talking. All right, so when did you open the store? Uh, we're three months in now, so we just opened uh, in early October. We did a soft launch when the Bucks came to town uh, for the, the Patriots Bucks game when Brady made his, his return to, to Gillette. Did you make a good decision? It was a great decision. Fair did he thing. make a good decision? Did you make a good decision to open the store? Oh, I think it's the best decision I've ever made. Man. It's been a crazy few months, it's been a crazy ride. We've had shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder traffic ever since the day we opened. And, um, I think we're giving not only the area, not only the region, but hopefully the industry something that, that, that's been lacking. Right? A, 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 a premium sports card experience, a premium retail experience, but also one that, that offers a price point for everybody, right? whether it be a dollar card to a million dollars. Right, so like me and Tim both started our businesses in COVID. Yeah. Now to open a store in COVID sounds like any business person would tell you you're absolutely insane. Well, I mean, at this point, we're, when are we not in COVID, right? So when are you not going to do it? You're either going to do something or you're not. And I think it, at the end of the day, we're all very fortunate, all of us in the, in the sports car world, we're, we're fortunate to be in an industry that, that seems to uh, continue to thrive despite COVID, right? So I think... It, it, the COVID pandemic and, and the, the things that we're dealing with as a country didn't really come into play as far as like kind of the macro vision for why we wanted to launch a retail brand. I think it's more we wanted to make sure that the consumer and our customers had something that they hadn't really had the opportunity to have before in this industry. So I think that's what Card Vault is, where we offer uh, really everything that the sports card market has to offer, whether that be a grading service, whether that be dollar slabs, whether that be million dollar slabs or singles and 50 cent cards, hobby wax, retail wax. Um, that's really our goal here is to, to bring a solution and bring an experience that really we didn't feel existed yet. Do you guys pay Tom Brady royalty for making all this happen? We don't pay Tom Brady royalty, but sure, sure. God, I would if I could. If I could do anything with Tom Brady, I would do it. I'd pay him all the money oh, on my You bank. would too, right? Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, yeah. You can throw the slabs around all you want. Yeah. So, so for me, I was lucky enough. I actually came here um, your opening day. Yeah. And I was, I was thinking to myself, what came first, the, the name or the idea of building it like this? And you guys will see footage in the set. You know, it looks like the things moving. I already put all the signage. I mean, yeah, we're good. I mean. I told you that last year. Just in stock, just in the car. 95 hats. Were they all hit? Did you? 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 Yeah, I think for us it was more the concept. The concept was a premium experience, right? One that you would expect to get at a jewelry store or a watch store or you know a Rolex store, if you will. What's the most expensive watch you <laughs> I've got some nice watches. I'm a watch guy. Okay. I'm a watch guy. We're not going to talk numbers. All right, all right. Higher or lower than the car in your hand? High. Okay. He's got a good card in his hand. We'll show that later. Um, but no, I think the, the concept is what we started with. It was a premium experience, um, bringing kind of the card world and the card experience up a notch uh, into 2022. And not only doing that, but making it accessible, right? So not everybody feels comfortable walking into a Rolex store. Not everybody feels comfortable walking into an art gallery. But for us, we try to provide that premium experience, but also be super inviting to the customer. So that's, that's the plan. So how much of your online business, so for everybody out there, Big Night Breaks is ran by Chris and that's kind of where it all started, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, you have a huge entertainment company that can't entertain, mm -hmm. right, because of COVID. Mm -hmm. 
you found sports cards and, and obviously you have a base of people who know the brand and know that name, right? Yeah. So how is that morphing into this? Are they one and the same or are they kind of separate? Yeah, yeah, it's a good question. Our story is very unique. Um, but we are backed and in, in, in our foundation is in nightlife and entertainment as, a, as an overall company, right? He's Big friends with Steve Aoki, by the way. <laughs> Steve's a good dude. He's a good friend. Um, but I think, in general, we started in, in Big Night, which is our parent company, uh, the company that, that Big Night Breaks and Card Vault and, and effectively Big Night Sports spawned out of, um, is one of the biggest nightlife and entertainment companies in the country. Right? 17 venues, nightclubs, top 10 nightclubs in the world, restaurants, bars, lounges, etc. Um, from that, like you said, in the pandemic, a lot of our venues had to close, and I, being a collector, a longtime collector, and, and really loving the sports card world and buying and selling and trading, you know, high end, mid end, low end, anything. Um, we saw it as an opportunity to merge the two worlds, right? Kind of colliding and forcing the collision of entertainment and nightlife and celebrity and athlete with sports cards. Because I felt like that was a, a really something that the industry was, was missing. Um, so we started Big Night Breaks, we started a break room, we started opening boxes for our customers, we started inviting our friends onto the feed, like Steve Aoki, like Dana White, and everybody in between. Um, and then from there, it was kind of a proof of concept to the core business that is Big Night to say, hey, these worlds make sense together. Yeah. So then it was, how do we expand upon that? And that was, okay, we'll get into brick and mortar, we'll start Card Vault, we'll start the Causeway Card Show and getting into trade shows, and we'll continue to build our own personal collection that we buy, sell, and trade on the high end, um, and we'll open up a grading service. And these are all the things that we've continued to build upon into our core business, which is now Big Night Sports, right? Which I'm managing partner of, and it's this umbrella company within Big Night. I, I love umbrellas. Sports. I was just talking about big umbrellas. Umbrellas. I'm big umbrellas. I'm a big umbrella, umbrella guy. Umbrella since literally In the last, if you guys watch episode one, like my five year goal is something with an umbrella. You want to build umbrellas? Stuff. Yeah. Well, yeah. He wants like, to make umbrellas. Well, Jerry so Seinfeld has that right. He has that market corner. Like an I umbrella for your card? Nah, see? This guy? This guy. Cut, cut, cut it, yeah. No, I follow the pack. But you want to build an umbrella. Yeah, I want. A business. I want. Show your slabs to be, that's why we have the new product, right? Sure. The UV protection. Which I love. That's under our umbrella. Yeah, right? of course. So, so you're building a, a parent company that offers many different products right. and different uh, schemes. A tech solution for the for card shows yeah. where you're able to go up, scan one of our displays and have live pricing, right? Be able to report yeah, I love it. through all that. I love it. And I, um, think, I think this idea, this product, um, I mean, when you first told me about it, when you when we FaceTimed and, and we talked through it, you showed me it, I thought it was genius immediately. I thought it was well needed. I've been looking for UV solutions for our stores. You know, UV is, is the enemy in the car world. Um, and we've been looking for UV solutions not only to protect the entire space and all of our future spaces, because there are many more car vaults coming, um, but also protecting the individual car. And not only worrying about the space being secure, but the car being secure and safe from UV light when you take it with you to a trade show, which we have this yep. weekend, right? So I want to go to that. So Tim, what what's your take on the, we've been to the Causeway show. Oh, yeah. We've been to a million shows, right. Tim and I. What, like, I think you got a cool, unique perspective to give people out there what the Causeway show is compared to others. Yeah, of course, yeah. Well, I think first and foremost, it goes back to what I originally said, is that we were trying to break the mold and trying to bring two worlds together, right? Entertainment, nightlife, sports cards. They felt like they should belong together, and now we kind of agree with our own, call it a hypothesis, I'm not a scientist, but um, we, well, feel like, <laughs> we feel like those two worlds belong together, and I think we've proven that to a degree. Um, and the Causeway Card Show was our way of saying, hey, as a company, we do shows for a living. Right. We do concerts for a living. Big Night Live is our concert venue. We put on shows for a living. We bring some of the biggest DJs in the world to our nightclubs and put on parties for a living. Why wouldn't we immediately start our own trade show and create an experience that we felt the industry was missing, right? Now, that's no knock on what's out there. The National is amazing for what it is. It's the National and we love it for what it is. The Dallas show is amazing for what it is. It's a great card show and it's super hyper focused on the cards. Right. And the Wisconsin Dell show and the Miami show and this show and that show all have their really great qualities. Our show, while focused on cards, is much more experiential. We want it to be a reason to come out to town to enjoy not just cards, but the industry, the nightlife, the city, 
and have that experience built around sports. Well, that's what I was getting to. Like, I, so, like I was asking Tim, and Tim, you give your perspective on somebody just that attends card shows because obviously it's his card show. He's going to say it's the best card show. Yeah. But your perspective as a not just a businessman but a collector, like what you thought of the Causeway show when you first went to it. So for me, I thought it was. Uh, First of all, it's very cool to have that TV garden, right? So you, you already got, you're already off doing awesome there. For me, it was like, so you brought the entertainment value, and part of the show is, right, you're looking at the cards, you're looking to make deals, but you also had great actual service. Mm -hmm. um, like, the, the beverages and food was great. Um, and then for me, I walked in, and you were on stage, and it just brought a whole new value to uh car yeah, shop that, that cool earpiece yeah. where he looks like he's telling like right like he's about to roll out like tech right like apple I'm about to start a jazz yeah, class. Right, yeah. Or that. yeah and then the next thing you know like you're bringing out a couple of ufc guys you brought out yeah. uh, scalabrini which was which is see that part of it right there is what not a lot of people are bringing because the uh, one of the things that happened that i absolutely loved was uh he pulled the kyle guy and everyone was like, oh, and then Scalabrini immediately was like, wait, is that what happens when people pull my card? Yeah. And it's something that you don't, you know, you had a good rapport with him, right? Yeah. It's something that not a lot of, like, maybe people that put on shows have the rapport to bring in these celebrities. Yeah. And you can just tell you're natural with them. So for me, it was absolutely, you know, and I know you talk about you curate good vendors to come in. So the, the product there is unbelievable, right? You can buy low end, high end cards, great collection. But for me, it was the pure. I wasn't ever bored. Even when I was yeah. tired, there was always something else to, to visually look at. I, I tried to come by and talk to you at the show, and you were busy the whole time. So I know there was a lot of in and out. It was, it was a great setup. You had great security. You had great actual service with the food and beverages. You hosted a show unbelievable. And I really do feel like the, the way you had it set up, if no one's ever been out there, you've got to come out to Tea and Garden. Um, I think it, at this point you're doing it two shows a year. It it's like quarterly it. now. I mean, so first off, I appreciate. Don't overdo it, please. Uh, we're not overdoing it. It's quarterly. It's four yeah. shows a year. It's fine. Right. It's we, not we, too we, many. Three and a half. <laughs> and and I appreciate what you said. And I think that's really the goal. Is it, you know, it is a card show. It's about buying, selling, and trading cards, but also kind of bringing in and weaving in all the other exciting things about our industry, right? Are, uh, we're in an industry that's built around pictures of, of athletes, right? They're pictures Dude. of athletes. And women. So, and, and yeah, but women and guys, yeah. and, but just pictures of athletes, and why wouldn't we try to interject some of that into the trade show, right? And I'm not just necessarily saying lining people up and having them sign autographs, but making them a part of the show, right? Opening a box on stage, talking yeah, through that the players good. that you're opening well, up. And anybody, that who, has some fun. Yeah, anybody who's seen you do it, and this is crazy, so. When I watch you with Dana White, right, mm -hmm. I've watched, you know, I've been watching your breaks for a while and, and you keep the energy going, you, you know, not everybody pulls a great box, but you're good at like keeping it going, keeping, you know, and, but being realistic about what's, you know, oh, that sucked. Like, and that, yeah. honestly, I think the yeah. transparency in that like goes way farther with like keeping on with your customers. But what I was, you know, what struck me most, and I've talked about this to so many people, I've watched so many breakers get like a, a sports card or a, or a sports player, celebrity, whatever, athlete, and, and it's like a paid thing. Mm, yeah. And they look like they don't want to be anywhere but there. Yeah. Like I've seen one where a guy's like got his kid in one hand and the phone's ringing the other and he's not even looking, they just pulled his card and he didn't even notice. What Chris is great at is not only being cool, because I mean, look, the guy's cool, but <laughs> he's also good at like, like Dana White, right? Mm -hmm. When that thing started, I was like, oh my God, this is going to go back. Because the guy's got a million things to do. Yeah. He's never seen the card in his life. Yeah. UFC prison. The second you open those cards, he, like his eyes never left. Yeah. And he was like truly en engaged. And you had the knowledge to like, oh, like you hate this guy now. Like, let's look, get out of that card. Like, well, what was, was cool, about? what was cool about Dana White and, and Dana joining the live and, and, and Dana joined as a, as a favor, as a friend, interested in any prism had just come out um, and you know by nature the industry we're in we're fortunate to have relationships like the one we have with Dana and I think in general he came on and didn't know anything about cards he didn't even know that Panini Isn't struck the deal exactly so so what you saw in real time the first time and, and ironically we had Dana on the live stream last night again which was insane but the first time that we're talking about which is when UFC prism came out um, it would you watch somebody learn in real time, 
like in front of your eyes. Dana was learning about cards. You saw how interested he was. You saw how excited he got about it being totally green to the space. Like he didn't know anything about cards. He didn't know anything about sports cards. He didn't know anything about UFC cards. And in turn, he's sitting there saying, oh my God, that's so cool. We just pulled the entire card from this weekend's UFC night. Like all five of those people you just pulled are part of the card. And I thought that was really cool because you start, you, you saw how captivating our industry can be, right? Even to somebody that doesn't really necessarily care about it. Yeah, well that, and that's what I think like, you know, and we'll, we won't go too far into it, but like, that's what fanatics mean. In my head, that's what like fanatics is going to do for this. It's going to be the here's the cards of the lineup of the, the NFL matchups, right? So people are going to want to be you know naturally interested. The fact that he was able to like realize you could pull the card for the week, like yeah. you know, and maybe give a bonus or something, or like or you know collect a set of like somewhere you saw a memorable moment. For sure, and I think. What's, what's so exciting about the spaces that we're in is even though it's been around for 100 years and even though trading cards, we, I mean, we have a 1952 Mickey Man, right? Cards have been around for years. But the space and the room that our industry has to grow and the things that can happen in our industry that haven't happened yet with technology and with, with content and with entertainment that haven't happened yet because of how hyper-focused our industry has been on just the cards themselves, I think is what's so exciting to me. There's a ton of room for explosive growth. There's a ton of room for bringing content in with the cards. There's a ton of room for bringing celebrity in with the cards and athlete in with the cards and excitement and entertainment in with the cards that we just haven't done yet because we're all so hyper-focused on the card, right? So we don't do all these exciting things that the world now allows us to do so much more easily. Yep. Right. So I think that's what I think is so exciting to me about the future is all of these companies, whether they be Panini, Topps, Fanatics, the UFC, MLB, the NFL, the NBA, the technology that is available to us now as a culture allows us to do so many super exciting, super cool things that I think are going to even uh, ignite this industry even more. Awesome. All right, we'll end it on this. What is the worst card you ever sold for the lowest price? We sell no, that's not you, you personally. So you had to have that card where you got it out early, right? And now that card is oh, card that I sold that I like way too early. You can collect. I, I this is I want the pen. I pulled a pack pulled. Uh, it hurts. I love it. We got to zoom in, zoom in. Oh, we're not covering it. I mean, the one that's most recent in my memory is 2019. Um, I pulled a, a Kyler Crack Dice Contents sold it raw. Yeah, that wasn't smart. It's, I sold it for, I sold it for $6,000 raw. I think they were in the 30s. 30s yeah, that's, that's, yeah, that's the thing that's happening now too. It's, it's so tough to even like raw up for sale at that price. It's like, yeah, you've got to take it at that time. There's, there's no choice, but then you see it gets free right now. It's like, yeah. you, you wish you never saw that. Yeah, yeah 2019 was a tough year. Like, I, I, you know, I was ripping and opening 2016, 2017 Bowman. I don't even want to know how many, you know, Sotos. Well, so, like, I, I, and funny to that, I was at the industry uh, summit, I'm so playing yeah, golf in the thing, much. and I'm showing this guy this video of, the guy going through in 2012, Mike Trout, and he pulls the arm, and he goes, oh, Mike Trout. And he moves on. Yeah. And he comes back and he's like, oh, I, was like, I, heard, I think I heard, like he goes on. Yeah, no idea who he was. I'm showing the guy, it was him. Yeah. He was the breaker. That's unbelievable. And he said he sold that car for $400. But like that's happens. That, that's the world we live in, right? Like, right? Yeah. And being a dealer in, in what I do on a daily basis, right? I buy, sell, trade cards every day of my life now. Right. So How do you take the life. emotion out? Yeah, you, you, the emotion comes out of it. Now, I have cards that I'm emotionally attached to. Right. right? I thought I had one in my pocket, but um, I, have I, cards, around cards. <laughs> I have cards that I'm emotionally attached to that are mine. Um, but when you separate your own personal collecting from the business and you just love the business for what it is, and you love the industry for what it is, and you love these cards for what they are, you have the ability to move them in and out of your collection, in and out of your inventory, um, much more easily. Now, is it tough to sell some cards sometimes? Yes, but does it help you make decisions on when you should maybe sit on something, or put something away, because you believe in it? Yes, but at the end of the day, I move through cards every day, so at the end, you know, it's, it's now, much easier to do that. We don't believe in selling cards, because 
No. Oh, he goes buy them. Oh, he goes buy them. So oh, what we did right. is we built other companies. Yep, exactly. Just, to, to you guys are real geniuses. You guys have you guys have companies that could survive and run without owning a single car. That's very true. Yep, we're going to protect and collect. All right, guys, we're out of here. Uh, if you're in the New England Foxville area, come check out the store that Brady built. And Mac, Mac Jones. Store. Well, you know, yeah. It is the store that Brady and Mac Jones built. No, Mac, Mac Jones, Jones did not build this yet. Well, bro, we really? just we just show your slab UV protected. No big deal. The slab shield uh, with 99% UV protection. Our one of one. Certified Shield RPA Mac Jones. I'm super pumped about that. I hate safe. the Patriots, and I hate yeah. that they may be doing this all over again and terrorizing my life. But that's a dope car. Very well protected. Yep. We're gonna have to get a slab strong on that too. You can come see it right yep. here at the Card Vault, Patriot Place, right at Gillette Stadium. We're here seven days a week. Tim, any final words? Nope. All this thing needs is a slab strong. Oh, we're gonna kill. It. We're gonna kill the slab strong. All this thing needs is a slab strong, Kate.